just say thank you Jesus for every day that we have on this earth. Amen. 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 And so uh, keeping that in mind I remember that old song simply I won't complain. <laughs> and I'm encouraging you don't complain because God knows what's best for us. Has the whole world in his hand. And God knows what to do when to do and how to do it. And we have to trust in God. And God will make everything all right. Look with me, if you will, at the book of Romans, chapter 13, and verse number 11. You'll find the scripture that begins with, and that, knowing the time. And that, knowing the time. And then he begins to stress the time, and that it is high time. And that, knowing the time, that is high time that we awake up out of a sleep. Why should we wake up out of a sleep? For the day of our salvation is nearer than when we believe. Listen to what he says. He said that the night is far spent. The day is at hand. What should we do? Let us cast off the works of darkness. Uh, and let us put on the armor of God. Therefore, let us walk in honesty, not in uh, reveling and drunkenness, not in chamberlain and wantonness, and not in uh, strife and envy. But put you on the Lord, put you on Christ, and make no provisions for the flesh, that uh, you may fulfill the, the, fulfill the desires of the flesh. I want to talk to you this morning about I ain't got time for it. Let me say that again. I want to talk to you this morning about I ain't got, I know I ain't got a word, but I ain't got, but you use it, I ain't got time for it. When Paul pins this letter, he writes this letter to a church that is both Jew and Gentile. Uh, a church of people who have been diametrically opposed one to another. Uh, the Jews thought that they were more worthy or better than the Gentiles, and the Gentiles thought that there was something wrong with the Jews because of their lack of appreciation for the salvation that God had shown them. And here they were all brought together in this one place called the church. 
and there is a contention among both sides and most of Romans is to uh, construct and to instruct uh, the rights that the Jews and the Gentiles have in this place called the church or the kingdom of God. In fact, it is one of the places it is called the church of Christ. According to Romans 16 and verse number 16, salute uh, one another with a holy kiss for the churches of Christ salute you. And so they're in the church of Christ and that does not mean somebody say amen there are not problems in the church. Uh, there's always contention and things that are going on, but, but Paul uh, is writing because Paul wrote from an intensive point of view and that in those times he believed that the end was now, that Christ could come back at any moment, uh, that at any moment we would face judgment. And so he says to them that now is not the time for the stuff that we're doing. And I believe that right now when we look at this world, we look at the rapture and the theories of rapture, we look at uh, the Armageddon theories and all these different end time theories, uh, I believe that, that we are closer, as Paul says, and I believe I can substantiate that, to judgment day than we ever have been. And I wonder this morning, have some of you, uh, have some of you ever thought about what judgment day is going to be like for us? Uh, I wonder if you ever thought that why we get so tied up in one thing or another, I don't like this, I don't like that, that we don't look at where we are spiritually and find ourselves in a sleep. Somebody say amen. Find ourselves in a sleep and Christ return and catch us unready and unprepared. Uh, Paul says that we have reached a point that we are running out of time. And I believe that we have more uh, tomorrows than we do, uh, more yesterdays than we do tomorrows. And it is incumbent on each and every one of you here to get yourselves together for that great getting up morning. It's time for us to wake up out of stuff that we've been doing all of our lives. Feelings that we've had and stuff that we've been caught up in all of our lives. What type of stuff would they, have they been caught up in? Well, revelings mean that they have been caught up in going out into the nightlife. It means that they have been caught up in the club scene and they have been caught up in doing their thing how they like to do it. And when one revels in those days, it normally led to drunkenness. Drunkenness is, is, is hard to do in those times because they didn't drink the stuff that you drink. I wish I had folk that are full of the Holy Ghost that were just dying for God's word that didn't look like they were still asleep and not alive to the word of God. I wish I was preaching right now to folk that knew Jesus like I knew Jesus so they don't bother me while I'm trying to preach the word of God and look like they knew they were going to heaven. If you knew you were going to heaven, you couldn't look like you look sometime. I got to stop my sermon and try to see what's wrong with you so we can have church. If there are three people that know Jesus, can you say amen? I don't know what's wrong with you, but in the house of God, we need to come and give God reverence. Amen. Give God reverence and have some appreciation for the word of God. Ain't like you studied it anyway. Can you say amen? Uh -huh. I can tell you right now, find Zephaniah and it takes us 35 minutes to get there. Praise God anyhow. So at least if I have stirred up this good cooking and fixed all this food, you at least smile and act like you want it. Can you say amen? I got cornbread, spiritual cornbread. I got spiritual ham. I got some good stuff up here. Amen. Amen. You can at least act like you want to eat. Amen. The gracious, the great God Almighty. I ask you to have the word hard. We don't complain. And don't take it out on me either. Praise God. Praise God. Can I, can I get back to my sermon now? I was trying to get y'all out early. Y'all were messing with me. And that's another 20 minutes just all messing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But now watch this. If Paul, and I know he's right. If Paul's writing in Romans express, and I want you to hear this, if it expresses that time is short, then in their day, if time was a matter of a problem in the text, look at the text, and that knowing the time, do you know what time it is? Do you know in the time that is high time? Do you understand that with America voting for same-sex marriage?
which is in his highest court of the land. Knowing the time that when there are more atheists arising and growing every day, billboards up in America saying that you can't trust the Bible and I don't believe in God. More folk who are addicted to one thing or another when folk are killing one another without any thought process whatsoever. When the average age of a child begins drugs around eight years old, do you know what time it is? He says that it's high time. What does it mean by high time? It means that the things that were said by Christ that would come to pass, that would be indicators that the judgment day is near, according to Paul, were near in his day. That was around AD 56. If the time was running out in AD 56, and it's 2013, we don't have much time to be sleeping on the job. We need to be aware that every day that we get up out of our bed could be the last day on this side of life. That every day that you get another day is one step closer to judgment day. If the fulfillment of the scriptures is right, and I believe it is, go with me, if you will, uh, into AD, AD 61, if you will. When the book of First Timothy chapter chapter four and verse number sixty one, uh, verse number one was being one through three, where the Bible says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in what day, in the latter times." Now I want you to know that in AD sixty one sixty five, that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and to doctrines of devils. In the latter days, it is high time. But when are the latter days? Glad you asked that question. Second Peter chapter 2, 3 and verse number 3, because we can find that in the last days and, and in the latter times, in fact, go to Acts 2, verse number 17. Acts 2, verse number 17, and hold your spot because I want to prove a point that when he talks about running out of time, he's not talking about it in some distant place. He's saying that we're out of time now. And if they're out of time now, then we sure enough don't have no time. Amen. You don't have time to be playing with whether or not God has one church. Amen. You don't have time to be playing with how do I please the world and how do I please God. You don't have time for folks who's always in somebody else's business. You don't have time for folks who have made up their mind they're going to serve the Lord. You don't have time for grumbling and bumbling with one another. You don't have time for walking around here trying to decide when God going to come, when God is going to come first. You don't have time for messing with, with messy folk. You don't have time. The text says in Acts 2 and verse 19, and it shall come to pass when? In the last days. Now hold on a minute. When is the last days in the latter days? Remember that Luke is writing from Peter's perspective that the fulfillment of the prophet Joel's prophecy has been fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, which means that he is not saying that it is going to take place. He said that in Acts chapter 2, the stuff that you saw then is the fulfillment of Joel 2, 17, when he said that, your, that, that, that the Lord would pour out his spirit and the young man shall dream dreams. That has been fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, which is called the what? The last days. So if the last days are in Acts chapter 2, what do you think today is? If the last day, it means that we are, we are in a position that time is not on our side. It becomes not just time, but it becomes high time. Church, it is high time that we realize that our relationship with God is the most important thing that we have of any value on this earth. It is important that you realize that, that, that in some cases that, that, that God is not negotiating, he is not reasonable, that he must be first and foremost, whether it's your mother, your father, your sister, and there's some stuff that you've been involved in that you no longer have time to be involved in anymore. 
There is some ways that I have been thinking that I have to come to the realization they have not worked for me. There is some stuff the reveling has to stop. The drunkenness has to stop. You don't have time to argue whether or not the Bible teaches to drink or to get drunk. You have to make up your mind because God's coming back. And that's not the time to find out that the drinking that you were talking about and the drinking that they were talking about in the text were two different drinkings. Yeah. Amen. You need to know right now what drinking they're talking about. And it's not just time, but it's high time that we take a close look at what God's word has to say to us. Why? Because now is the day of our salvation nearer than when we believe. And I believe right now that God is closer to coming back now than he ever has been. Just look around if you will. Folk hate, folk hate church now. Folk can't stand the man of God now. Folk can care less about what the church is trying to do. People care about themselves. People are giving in the, as long as I got mine, I can care less about anybody else. And it's high time that we stop and ask ourselves, can I make it to heaven? Can I make it to heaven? Thinking like I've been thinking, doing what I've been doing. Look, if you will, at the text, you'll find that he says that there's some things we have to do when we begin to deal with time. I'll start preaching in a minute, but I want to teach just for a minute. And knowing the time, listen to what Peter says in 2 Peter 3 and verse number 3. He says, knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Look, if you will, do you remember the book of Matthew said, no man know the hour nor the day in which uh, uh, the Lord shall come. And when we look at 1 Peter 4 and verse number 17, we'll find real quick that judgment shall begin at the house of God. Not in Jerusalem, not on some mountain, but it will begin with the people of God. Well, preacher, uh, you've established that in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 12, listen to what God says and we'll confirm again that time is not on our side. The Bible says in Hebrews 2 and verse, uh, Hebrews 2 and verse number 1, he said, God is sundry times and in time past, he spake to us through the prophets, having this last days, what days? What days? Last days. Now I told you a lot of times uh, in the last days and the last days were then. Now that was in, 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 in AD 70 through 90 during the Mish or Nero's reign. During those days, he said, have in these last days, these biblical days, spoken us through God's word. The only thing that is left with God concerning speaking of man is the judgment. For it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that comes the what? Comes the judgment. Well, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying to you that you got some stuff this morning that you need to take off, and you need to start saying, you know what? I don't have time to be the person I used to be because I'm living in the last days. If the doctor told you that to, you had one month to live, would you really be arguing about who drank the last Coca-Cola in your icebox? If the doctor said, you got 30 days to live, would you still be talking about, listen, baby, I asked you to pick up your sock. Certain things don't matter when you know time is what? It's running out. In fact, most of the time when folk get told that they don't have that long to live, they make a bucket list and start being nice to everybody that they meet. Praise God anyhow, because they value and they realize, I don't have long. And so at first they cry, they get upset, and they say, you know what? I, I don't have time for certain things. I'm about to die pretty soon and go meet my Lord and my Savior. I don't have time to be getting no mess with you, talking about what I think about this. All I know is I'm getting ready to face judgment. When Christians take the mindset that I'm about to face judgment, there are certain things you don't have time to get involved with anymore. And what we will begin to do is to redeem the time that we have. Somebody ought to say amen. And you know how you ought to live right now? You need to live like you understand you don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time to be lost up in Chamberlain and wanting. What is Chamberlain and wanting? Chamberlain is that the fact that the men were going from woman to woman to woman to woman. You, you've done that long enough. You out of time for that. You get too old for that. There's a process in which you are running out of time. Extinguishing grace in your life. Let me say that again. You don't have time. Some of you are 30 years old and still can't figure out how to save $15 from one paycheck to the next paycheck. You are running out of time of being stupid. Amen. 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 You don't have time to keep it. You don't have time to keep the understanding that when you get your check, you need to manage your funds and you need to do things in order to make it from one week to the next. You out of time. Amen. 
You don't have time to keep going up to people, and every time they walk with you, they bring their open your ears with all this negative stuff. Well, I don't like this, and I think that I feel, and I got this and this. Baby, I don't have time. Amen. I don't have time for that. You don't have time for folks still start doing the same thing they did last year. We, we sit here right now. The church does not have time to keep coming up in here and playing traditional church with folks that's not ready to go to another spiritual level. level. We're running out of time. Folk are dying. Folk are going to lose their soul by the million with people that's coming in here just because any of them and cousin them and many of them come here and still are not growing spiritually. It's high time that you get serious about your spiritual walk with the Savior. It's time to start. You, you don't have time to see when you're going to decide to step out of faith. Because no man can be saved without faith. At some point, you're going to have to put what God's word says in action in your life. And you don't have time to keep playing games, acting like, oh, it's okay, I'll do it tomorrow. The worst thing I ever heard a person say is, I'm not going to get baptized today. I'm going to wait and do it another day. It's high time you get saved right now. If you're not a man, you don't have time to be playing around. Because no man knows the hour, nor the day that the Lord will come back. And if that's true for the person who is unsaved, the person that's in the church whose condition is worse than the person that's outside of the church, you don't have time to keep dancing with the devil. You don't have time. But what we do have time to do, with every breath that we have, we have time to begin to do what? Redeem the time. How did the text describe redeeming the time? Go back to Romans chapter 13 and verse number 11. You'll see uh, very quickly that he gives us uh, certain things that we can do. He says that when, when, when our salvation is nearer than when we first begin. Then he said the night is far spent. I've spent too much time lost chasing women. I've spent too much time wasting money. I spent too much time letting the good times roll. I spent too much time going to church when I get ready. I spent too much time rejecting God's word. I spent too much time deciding to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. I spent way too much time in one relationship to another. Some of you are going to be married five times before you leave here. Sometimes you have to say, you know what, maybe marriage is just not for me, and I need to just get somewhere and sit down and be quiet somewhere. I spent too much time looking for love and all the wrong places. I've spent too much time with my attitude and my behavior. I've spent too much time worried about folk liking me or not liking me. I can't make folk like me. You have to work that stuff out on your own. I don't have time for whether or not you like me or don't like me, what you think about me. I don't have time for envy and strife. I'm not going to kick God come back when we envy and strife. I don't have time with folk, but what if folk going to be good or be, I don't have time to try to work out your salvation. I got to work out I spent too much time trying to figure out soul. And you know what I learned? You can't figure out nobody. You can't figure out crazy folk. It'll drive you crazy. You can't, you can't figure out. You, you see a man sit up and You can't figure that out. You can't figure out. You, can't figure out blah, blah, blah. you have to you spend too much time with stuff that has not profited you. He says, so here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. Y'all had a good time? You had a good time? If you had ever had a good time in this world, raise your hand. Tell the truth and say the truth. Y'all know y'all had some good time. Oh, yeah, I can look at you tell you had some good time. If you're not a part of it, say, yeah. Yeah, I'm not All right, all right. Well, the well, 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 time is up. Yeah. Amen. I'm the part of it. the time is up. You had a good time? Now it's time to redeem the time. And the text suggests, number one, the first thing we need to do is we need to cast off the works of darkness. I like that because it suggests that I have the power to, to take control of my life. Do you understand? You don't always have to be in the situation that you're in. You have to understand that the situation is controlled by a God who has everything in the power of his hand. Are oh, you listening to me right now? Just because your mama and them didn't don't mean you don't have to. Just because they don't don't mean that you have to follow down that street. You have the power to cast off some stuff. You have the power to cast off illiteracy in your life. You have the power to cast off laziness. You have the power to cast off stuff that's been weighing you down all your life. You can cast off that low self esteem and carry yourself like you somebody without getting approval from it. If you don't need the Jews approval, you have God's approval in your life. You have power beyond measure right here in this seat. And Paul says, cast it off. Is there something you need to cast off right now? Sometimes we got to cast off immaturity. Sometimes we got to cast off silliness. Sometimes we have to cast off the desires and the cares of work, and we got to put on the arm of Christ. I have the power to cast it off, and I can put on the arm of Christ.
life. And when I put on the armor of Christ, listen to what the text says. When I put on the armor, uh, look at this, let us put on the armor of light. And then the next verse says what? And let us walk honestly. Let us be honest. Let us be honest. Let us be honest. Let us be honest. That, 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 that in times I had walked like I needed to walk. But now I'm walking with the armor of Christ. And I got to realize that the saints that I was caught up in the city going to come after me. And that's why I have on the armor of Christ. And because, because, because I still got some stuff that I remember that was good that I spent a lot of time with that's still calling me. And if I'm not careful, I'll make provisions. Y'all looking at me funny. Watch the text. Watch the text. Jerry, watch the text. I spent too much time. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. I've come to the realization the person I used to be, I have the power to take control and put on the arm of life. Now watch the text. Let us walk honestly, not in, watch what it says, not in, uh, 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 not check, what's the first one? Not in, uh, uh, heaven now, riotousness, which led to drunkenness, not in chamberlain and wantonness, and not in strife and envy. But the problem is I got to walk honestly and remember that there's some stuff in those six verbs of vices that I used to they used to call me. Amen. I must tell the truth that and I gotta quit lying and stop saying I'm not envious because when God blessed you sometime, I got upset with God. Amen. I didn't like God giving you a car and then give me a car. And y'all thought, oh, y'all ain't being you're not being honest. You had never seen God bless somebody doing half the stuff they're supposed to do. Amen. And you look at God and say, what in the world? You can't 